It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's episode of Comparative Mythology, we're going to compare and contrast Jesus Christ to Dionysus. Before we start the comparison, I want to use a quotation that comes directly from Justin Martyr, who was one of the first Christian apologists during the Greco-Roman period. He says right here, And saying that the Word, who is the first offspring of God, was born for us without sexual union, as Jesus Christ our teacher, and that he was crucified and died, and after rising again, ascended into heaven, we introduce nothing new beyond what you say of those whom you call sons of Zeus, you know how many sons of Zeus, the writers whom you honor of, Hermes, the Hermetic word and teacher of all, Aclepius, who was also a healer and after being struck by lightning, ascended into heaven, as did Dionysus, who was torn to pieces, Hercules, who tried to escape his torments, threw himself into the fire. Is it necessary to remind you what kind of actions are related to each of those who are called sons of Zeus? It's set to point out that they are recorded for the benefit and instruction of students for all consider a fine thing to be imitated of the gods. So the question then becomes, what exactly is the origin of the Dionysus cult? Based upon the historical information that we have so far, it seems as though that there is actually evidence of a cult to Dionysus that dates back from the 14th century, and the site continued to be important into the Roman period. The exact origin of the Dionysus cult is unknown. However, it is believed that this cult might have been an integration of an older, more widely spread cult of the Mesopotamian region. Also during that time period, we also know that the Jews were pretty much persecuted and they were forced to partake in the festivals related to Dionysus. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of God and to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem, and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympius, and that in Gerizim of Jupiter the defender of strangers, as they did desire, that dwelt in the place. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people, for the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles, who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places, and besides, that brought in things that were not lawful. The altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbiddeth. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient fasts, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. And in the day of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the fast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus, carrying ivy. Moreover, they went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. So the question then becomes, what exactly are the similarities between Jesus and Dionysus? Well, for starters, both Jesus and Dionysus are born directly out of miraculous conception. Usually for the case of miraculous conceptions, we do know that typically a male deity comes down to impregnate a woman, and a woman will give birth to that child, and that child will become a demigod. The mother of Zeus's son Dionysus is variously named. Some say that she was Demeter or Io. Some name her Dione. Some Persephone with whom Zeus coupled in the likeness of a serpent, and some Lethe. But the common story runs as follows. Zeus, disguised as a mortal, had a secret love affair with Semele, Moon, daughter of King Cadmus of Thebes, and jealous Hera, disguising herself as an old neighbor, advised Semele, then already six months with child, to make her mysterious lover a request that he would no longer deceive her, but reveal himself in his true nature and form. How, otherwise, could she know that he was not a monster? Semele followed this advice, and, when Zeus refused her plea, denied him further access to her bed. Then, in anger, he appeared as thunder and lightning, 
and she was consumed. But Hermes saved her six-month son, sewed him up inside Zeus's thigh to mature there for three months longer, and in due course of time delivered him. Thus Dionysus is called twice-born, or the child of the double door. Behold, God's son has come unto this land of Thebes, even I, Dionysus, whom the brand of heaven's hot splendor lit to life, when she who bore me, Cadmus's daughter, Semele, died here. So changed in shape from God to man, I walk by Dirce's streams and scan Asmina's shore, mine ivy javelin, and round her shoulders hang my wild fawn skin. For they have scorned me, whom at least beseemed Semele's sisters, mocked my birth, nor deemed that Dionysus sprang from dying seed. My mother sinned, said they, and in her need, with Cadmus plotting, cloaked her human shame with the dread name of Zeus, for that the flame from heaven consumed her, seeing she lied to God. Thus must they vaunt, and therefore hath my rod on them first fallen, and stung them forth wild-eyed from empty chambers. The bare mountain side has made their home. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. Now one aspect that both Jesus and Dionysus share is the aspect of wine because Dionysus is actually the god of wine and Jesus can actually turn water into wine. Now this right here is an image of the wedding of Peleus and Seus and they were drinking wine from Dionysus in that image. It says from the Library of Apollodorus that when he married Theos, the daughter of Nereus, whose hand Zeus and Poseidon has been rivals, but when Timus prophesied that the son born of Seos would be mightier than his father, they withdrew. But some say that when Zeus was bent on gratifying his passion for her, Prometheus declared that the son born to him by her would be the Lord of Heaven, and other affirms that Seos would not consent with Zeus because she has been brought up by Hera, and that Zeus in anger would marry her to a mortal. Chiwan, therefore having advised Peleus to seize her and hold her fast in spite of her shape-shipping, he watched his chance and carried her off, and though she turned now into fire, now into water, and now into a beast, he did not let go till he saw that she had resumed her former shape, and he married her on Pelion, and there did God celebrate the marriage with feast and song. So what exactly did Jesus do during a wedding? And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bare it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, 
the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Another similarity between the two characters is the fact that both Jesus and Dionysus had to face a trial before Dionysus speaks. O oh, eye that cravest sights thou must not see, O oh, heart, a thirst for that which stakes not, thee, Pentheus, I call, forth and be seen, in guise of woman, meaned, saint of Dionysus, to spy upon his chosen and thine own mother. And to Pentheus, clad like a bacchanal, and strangely excited, a spirit of bacchic madness overshadowing him. Thy shape, methinks, is like to one of Cadmus' royal maids. Pentheus speaks. Yea, and mine eyes bright. Yon sun shines twofold in the sky, Thebes twofold and the wall of seven gates. And is it a wild bull, this, that walks and waits before me? There are horns upon thy brow. What art thou, man or beast? For surely... Now the bull is on thee, Dionysus speaks. He who erst was wrath goes with us now in gentleness. He hath unsealed thine eyes to see what thou shouldst see, Pentheus. Say, stand I not as I know stands, or she who bore me, Dionysus. When I look on thee, it seems I see their very selves, but stay. Why streams that lock abroad, not where I laid it, crossed under the coif? Pentheus, I did it as I tossed my head in dancing to and fro, and cried his holy music. Dionysus, tending him, it shall soon be tied aright. Tis mine to tend thee. Nay, but, but stand with head straight. Pentheus, in the hollow of thy hand I lay me. Deck me as thou wilt. Dionysus, thy zone is loosened likewise, and the folded gown not evenly falling to the feet. Pentheus, tis so by the right foot, but here, methinks, they flow in one straight line to the heel. Dionysus, while tending him, and if thou prove their madness true, I, more than true, what love and thanks hast thou for me? Pentheus, not listening to him, In my right hand, is it, or thus, that I should bear the wand to be most like them? Dionysus, Up let it swing in the right hand, timed with the right foot's spring. Tis well thy heart is changed. Pentheus, more wildly, What strength is this? Cathirian steeps, and all that in them is. How sayest thou? Could my shoulders lift the whole? Dionysus, surely thou canst, and if thou wilt, thy soul, being once so sick, now stands as it should stand. Pentheus, shall it be bars of iron, or this bare hand and shoulder to the crags, to wrench them down? Dionysus, wouldst wreck the nymph's wild temples, and the brown rocks where pan pipes at noonday? Pentheus, nay, not I, force is not well with women. I will lie hid in the pine break. Dionysus, even as fits a spy on holy and fearful things, so shalt thou lie. Pentheus, with a laugh, They lie there now, <laughs> methinks, the wild birds, caught by love among the leaves and fluttering not. Dionysus, it may be, that is what thou goest to see, ay, and to trap them, so they trap not thee. Pentheus, forth through the Theban's town, I am their king, I, their one man, seeing I dare this thing. Dionysus, yea, thou shalt bear their burden, thou alone, therefore thy trial awaiteth thee, but on, with me into thine ambush shalt thou come unscathed, then let another bear thee home. Pentheus, the queen, my mother, Dionysus, Marked of every eye, 
Pentheus, for that I go. Dionysus, thou shalt be born on high. Pentheus, that were like pride. Dionysus, thy mother's hands shall share thy carrying. Pentheus, nay, I need not such soft care. Dionysus, so soft. Pentheus, whatever it be, I have earned it well. Exit Pentheus toward the mountain. Dionysus speaks. Fell, fell art thou, and to a doom so fell thou walkest, that thy name from south to north shall shine, a sign for ever. Reach thou forth thine arms, Agave, now, and ye dark-browed Cadmean sisters, greet this prince so proud to the high ordeal, where, save God and me, none walks unscathed. The rest this day shall see. Exit Dionysus following Pentheus. The chorus begins. And straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude, crying aloud, began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them, and delivered Jesus, when he had scourged him, to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. One final aspect is the aspect of ascension, because for the case of Dionysus, he was torn to pieces and ascended to heaven, and the same thing kind of... One final aspect that's really similar is the aspect of ascension, because after Dionysus was torn apart into pieces, he later ascended into heaven. And for the case of Jesus Christ, we also know that after he died, he basically ascended into heaven after the third day of the resurrection. At Hera's orders, the Titans seized Zeus's newly born son, Dionysus, a horned child, crowned with serpents, and, despite his transformations, tore him into shreds. These they boiled in a cauldron, while a pomegranate tree sprouted from the soil where his blood had fallen. But, rescued and reconstituted by his grandmother Rhea, he came to life again. Perse Having established his worship throughout the world, Dionysus ascended to heaven, and now sits at the right hand of Zeus as one of the twelve great ones. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. 
And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Another aspect that is really similar does not necessarily relate to Jesus is the idea of a prison break, because for the case of Dionysus and the Bacchae, he escaped prison, while Paul also escaped prison, and both of them escaped prison by an earthquake. Stand close and mark what we shall hear. The two stand back, partially concealed, while there enters in hot haste Pentheus, followed by a guard. He is speaking to the soldier in command. Pentheus speaks. Scarce had I crossed our borders when mine ear was caught by this strange rumour that our own wives, our own sisters from their hearths are flown to wild and secret rites and cluster there high on the shadowy hills with dance and prayer to adore this new-made god, this Dionyse, whatever he be. And in their companies deep wine-jars stand, and ever and anon, away into the loneliness now, one steals forth, and now a second, maid or dame, where love lies waiting, not of God. The flame, they say, of Bacchios wraps them. Bacchios! Nay, tis more to Aphrodite that they pray. Howbeit, all that I have found, my men hold bound and shackled in our dungeon den. The rest, I will go hunt them. I and snare my birds with nets of iron to quell their prayer, and mountain song and rites of rascaldom. Pieri, Dionysus loveth thee. He will come to thee with dancing, come with joy and mystery, with the Maenads at his hest, winding, winding to the west, cross the flood of swiftly glancing Axios in majesty. Cross the Lydias, the giver of good gifts and waving green. Cross that farther stream of story, through a land of steeds and glory, rolling, bravest, fairest river ever of mortals seen. A voice within now speaks. Yo, yo, awake ye damsels, hear my cry, calling my chosen, hearken ye. A maiden. Who speaketh? Oh, what echoes thus? Another. A voice, a voice that calleth us. The voice. Be of good cheer. Lo, it is I, the child of Zeus and Semele. A maiden. O oh, master, master, it is thou. Another. O oh, holy voice, be with us now. The voice. Spirit of the chained earthquake, hear my word. Awake, awake. An earthquake suddenly shakes the pillars of the castle. A maiden. Ha! What is coming? Shall the hall of Pentheus, racked in ruin, fall? Leader. Our God is in the house. Ye maids, adore him. Chorus. We adore him all. The voice. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and every one's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. In conclusion, I think it's entirely possible, because Christianity emerged directly from Hellenistic culture, that's entirely possible that the people that lived during that time period from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John had inspiration from their surrounding cultures, which is why there are so many similarities between Jesus and Dionysus. But uh, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll see you guys 
in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.